Hello, it's John Eaton, and today I thought I'd do a, a video on um, McCartney as a lyricist. Uh, I was going to compare McCartney versus Lennon. That's always an interesting topic. Uh, but I thought, I think they deserve a video in, in them, uh, each to their own, and uh, I'm not going to compare them in a video. And I'm actually going to split McCartney's skills as a lyricist between the Beatles' work in this volume and then maybe cover his lyrical ability in his solo career in another volume and, and similar with Lennon. We'll see how it goes. But uh, it was all inspired by this article, which is a review of the, the new book of McCartney's lyrics, which is coming out not until November actually, but it's been reviewed now in the Telegraph or recently, 26th of February, and kindly sent to me by my good friend Roy Stewart. And uh, it got me thinking, uh, because I've always, if I'm honest, thought of Lennon as a better lyricist than McCartney, but this guy, Tristram Fane Saunders, paints quite a persuasive argument that McCartney was every bit as good as Lennon, or on the same level anyway and the title, It's Empathy That Makes McCartney's Lyrics So Sublime. So I don't know what, whether this book's going to be any good when it comes out. I, I hope it's illustrated with some decent pictures. I mean, I, this book was released in 1981, Paul McCartney, Composer Artist, and it was a mixture of sheet music and... <laughs> you're going to laugh here. Another book of mine falling apart. Um, McCartney's illustrations as an artist. And at the time, I thought it was a bit of a knee-jerk reaction to when Lennon died. Uh, a lot of people were sort of sanctifying him and um, slagging off McCartney. So this, I, I viewed this at the time as a bit of a get my own back. And I'm just as much of an artist as John Lennon. But I don't think those drawings of Paul's are particularly good accompaniment to his lyrics compared to say this book by compiled by Alan Aldridge which has superb contemporary paintings you know from the time 69 I think 69 and 70 it came out in two volumes and um, I find this book a lot more satisfying than that Paul McCartney composer artist we'll see what the McCartney book has in the way of illustrations, but um, just before I get into selecting some of my favourite McCartney lyrics from the Beatles period, um, Tristram Fane Saunders seeks to answer two questions. One, was Lennon a better writer? And two, are song lyrics poetry? And the answers, the first one, was Lennon a better writer, saying no, and the second one is, is lyrics are song lyrics poetry in the affirmative. And I think, I'm not sure about that because if you don't know the music to some of these songs, to listen to the, to read the words cold on the page cannot be, is often not very satisfactory. And I remember being a very pretentious schoolboy uh, <laughs> in when we were asked to read out favorite bits of literature or poetry in front of the class, I chose I Am The Walrus, and I thought I was being particularly clever reading out those I Am The Eggman lyrics. But shortly afterwards I felt embarrassed, because I, I think those words, although they're sublime in the context of the song, in the cold light of day on the printed page don't sound very good at all. <laughs> um, I don't know, uh, Lennon himself said that Across the Universe was um, the best bit of poetry he'd written. But anyway, this video is not about um, Lennon, it's about Paul. So using this book, I've selected a few favorites of mine to show you why I think Paul is a very capable lyricist. And the first one I've chosen is I'll Follow the Sun, which was a very early song written when Paul was only 14. And can you imagine a 14 year olds writing one day you'll look to see I've gone for tomorrow may rain so I'll follow the sun someday you'll know I was the one but tomorrow may rain so I'll follow the sun and now the time has come so my love I must go and though I lose a friend in the end you will know 
I, I think that's pretty decent lyrics for a 14 year old and I, I think it's pretty accomplished. Um, obviously yesterday, the early Beatles in general was plagued by what some would call banal lyrics about boy girl, she loves you, I want to hold your hand. Nothing very sophisticated there and then Dylan encouraged them to come out of their skin um, and do something more thought provoking. Um, when I guess the first example in that respect is Yesterday from the Help album. And um, I'll show you some quotes from Lennon in a minute, but he, even he said that those words work. And if one just reads some of the poetry in the song, it, it is in incredibly beautiful, even though one has the tune in one's head one's one, when one's reading the lyrics. I think even they stand alone as poetry. Yesterday all my troubles seem so far away. Now it looks as though they're here to stay. Oh, I believe in yesterday. Suddenly, I'm not half the man I used to be. There's a shadow hanging over me. Oh, yesterday came suddenly. Why she had to go, I don't know. She wouldn't say. I said something wrong. Now I long for yesterday. Yesterday, love was such an easy game to play. Now I need a place to hide away. Oh, I believe in yesterday. I think it's a masterpiece and uh, it was rightly lauded at the time. Um, and then from the following album, Rubber Soul, from the same year, 65, Michel, very sophisticated use of French, which was must have been ahead of its time. I don't think any English rockers had um, used uh, Michel Mar Marbelle, which is French for my beauty. These are words that go together well. Uh, Michel Marbel, Sans les mots qui vont très bien ensemble, which is the straight French translation for these are words that go together well. I think he got help from that from someone. But it, either way, I, I know Lennon contributed to the song and maybe to some of the lyrics, uh, but I think it's a very touching love song and out of the ordinary compared to their earlier work. Paperback writer, the great example of the third person song which Lennon was always slagging off saying Paul's always writing these songs about traffic wardens or, or uh, mythical characters and I prefer to write about me because I know me and he was slightly derogatory when he said that um, in 1970 in the Lennon Remembers interview but Paperback Writer when you look at it, look at it as a piece of poetry I think it's quite, it's quite moving you know Dear Sir or Madam will you read my book it took me years to write, will you take a look? It's based on a novel by a man named Lear and I need a job and I want to be a paperback writer. It's a dirty story of a dirty man and his clinging wife doesn't understand. His son is working for the Daily Mail. It's a steady job, but he wants to be a paperback writer. I think it's, uh, it's pretty sensational um, as a song and the lyrics are decent. Eleanor Rigby is always acclaimed as one of McCartney's masterpieces and there's some controversy about how much John contributed. I think he did contribute a few lines, he probably didn't contribute too much. It's, it's always acknowledged that Paul had the original um, couple of lines or the, the first verse anyway and that maybe the, the others helped out flesh out the rest of the lyrics. But um, just stunning lyrics, you know, it, albeit about a completely mythical third person. Eleanor Rigby picks up the rice in the church where a wedding has been, lives in a dream, waits at the window, wearing a face that she keeps in a jar by the door. Who is it for? I think it's absolutely brilliant. And um, the main conclusion I've reached, encouraged by this article here in the Telegraph, is that McCartney, whilst the band were together, was coming out with lyrics as good as Lennon's. I've always, up until a few years ago at least, I always thought Lennon was the superior lyricist and I think still think he's the more consistent and the more interesting in general. And Paul's songs sometimes veer towards the, uh, the more sentimental, particularly in his solo career. But I think when the Beatles were together, even a sentimental song like here, there and everywhere. I mean, who can write lyrics like um, to lead a better life, I need my love to be here, here making each day of the year, changing my life with a wave of her hand. Nobody can deny that there's something there. 
there running my hands through her hair, both of, both of us thinking how good it can be. Someone is speaking, but she doesn't know he's there. I want her everywhere. And if she's beside me, I, need, I know I need never care. But to love her is to need her, meet her everywhere, knowing that love is to share. I think it's just absolutely brilliant. Um, and I've picked a few. Again, all, all of these songs are really well illustrated in this book. And I think it's the most successful combination of lyrics and pictures ever released in connection with the Beatles. Good Day Sunshine I, Good, Good Day Sunshine I picked from Revolver because it sums up the optimism of 66. You know, that great summer when uh, England won the World Cup football and Beatles were releasing Revolver. Can you think of a much better summer than that? And uh, we take a walk, the sun is shining down burns my feet as they touch the ground. Just a wonderful um, line to express happiness. Um, in contrast, for no one, although not written about a breakup that he knew about, because him and Jane Asher were not to split up for another two years almost after this song, but for a 24-year-old to write such a sophisticated love song I was speaking to my son, Tommy, and he thinks this is McCartney's best lyric. Um, your day breaks, your mind aches. You find that all her words of kindness linger on when she longer, no longer needs you. She wakes up, she makes up, she takes her time and doesn't feel. She has to hurry. She no longer needs you, and in her eyes you see nothing. No sign of love behind the tears, cried for no one. A love that should have lasted years. You want her, you need her, and yet you don't believe her when she says your love is dead. Her love is dead. You think she needs you. And in her eyes you say nothing. No sign of love behind the tears cried for no one. A love that should have lasted years. Heartbreaking and written by a 24-year-old. Then we got Penny Lane, often coupled with Strawberry Fields, it came out on the same single, and they're both marvellous in different ways. Strawberry Fields is the more psychedelic lyric and the more psychedelic song, but Penny Lane um, represents that area of Liverpool which Paul knew so well growing up, they all knew so well growing up, and uh, just perfectly depicts it in his description of what, what would otherwise be, you know, ordinary people and ordinary things going on in a street, but he makes it sound so interesting and fascinating. In Penny Lane there is a barber showing photographs of every head he's had the pleasure to know and all the people that come and go that stop and say hello. In the corner is a banker with a motor car. The little children laugh at him behind his back and the banker never wears a Mac in the pouring rain. Very strange. And the combination of those lyrics with the tune and the kind of psychedelic psychedelic time of 67 just, just produced an absolute a uh, masterpiece, sorry to use that word so often. The uh, next example I've got is She's Leaving Home, and I think John might have had something to do with the lyrics in the chorus. Um, but again, it's a song written about an everyday um, human situation where a, a young daughter leaves home and falls out with her parents and goes chasing after some man, and the parents are distraught that she's left home. And the uh, beauty of the Beatles here, and Paul McCartney in particular, is he's, he's a, this kind of song appeals to both the angle from the parents and the angle from the daughter. And I, I think it's pretty rare for, for a song to do that. So it starts off, as I say, pretty mundanely with description of Wednesday morning at five o'clock as the day begins, silently closing her bedroom door, leaving the note that she hoped would say more. She goes downstairs to the kitchen, clutching her handkerchief, quietly turning the back door key. Stepping outside, she is free. Father snores as his wife gets into her dressing gown, picks up the letter that's lying there, standing alone at the top of the stairs. She breaks down and cries to her husband, Daddy, our baby's gone. Why should she treat her so thoughtlessly? How could she do this to me? Brilliant. And then the last verse, Friday morning at nine o'clock, she is far away waiting to keep the appointment she made, meeting a man from the motor trade. Just absolutely brilliant, evocative lyrics. And uh, again, um, Tristram Fane Saunders talks about empathy and it's got, McCartney's got it in spades in a song like this. 
just representing everyone's viewpoint. Uh, Fool on the Hill from 67, uh, same year, a song about loneliness and uh, the outcast, you know, and just just thoroughly perceptive and wonderful in its execution, day after day, alone on a hill. The man with a foolish grin is keeping perfectly still. Nobody wants to know him. They can see he's just a fool. And he never gives an answer, but the fool on the hill sees the sun going down and the eyes in his head see the world spinning round. I think that stands alone as poetry, in my view. By the way, I'm gonna do a separate video on George Harrison's lyrical capabilities as well. I'm not going to leave him out. Um, might do one on Ringo as well. I'm <laughs> not sure. But um, just to continue our journey through the 60s, we've got Lady Madonna, which was people speculated, was it about Mother Mary, Mother of Jesus, or was it about a prostitute, or who was it about? But uh, wonderfully um, good lyrics. I'm not sure how to interpret them myself, to be honest. Lady Madonna, children at your feet. Wonder how they manage to make ends meet. Who finds the money when you pay the rent? Did you think that money was heaven sent? Friday night arrives without a suitcase. Sunday morning creep in like a nun. Monday's child has learned to dye his bootlace. See how they run. Just uh, amazing. Uh, the more I think about it, the more McCartney, certainly during his time in the Beatles, was producing masterpiece after masterpiece. And Hey Jude, which Tristram thinks is his best song and he remarks that it wasn't even written about him it was written about Julian's um, plight having his parents split up on him John and John and Cynthia were splitting up and Paul went down to see Julian and wrote this song and uh, again the words stand alone as poetry even if you don't know the song even though everyone on the planet probably knows it hey Jude don't make it bad take a sad song and make it better remember to let it into your heart then you can start to make it better. Uh, and any time you feel the pain, hey Jude, refrain. Don't carry the world upon your shoulders. For well you know that it's a fool who plays it cool by making his world a little colder. Hey Jude, don't let me down. You have found her, now go and get her. Remember to let her into your heart, then you can start to make it better. I mean, that song's been hopelessly overplayed over the years and by Paul in concert. But when one returns to the original song, sees the original lyric on the printed page, here it is in this book. And here's the original Beatles version. One never gets tired of it, or I don't anyway. Back in the USSR is another huge song from Paul at the time, successfully mim mimicking the Beatles, the Beach Boys sound and doing a better version than the Beach Boys themselves. Uh, Blackbird is another classic from that era, the White Album. And I don't know if it was about civil rights or whatever, but it's whichever way you look at it, it's a song about someone struggling for freedom. Blackbird singing in the dead of night, take these broken wings and learn to fly all your life. You were only waiting for this moment to arise. Blackbird singing in the dead of night, take these sunken eyes and learn to see all your life. You were only waiting for this moment to, to be free. Blackbird fly. Blackbird fly into the light of the dark black light night. Blackbird fly, blackbird fly into the light of the dark black night. I just think it's absolutely beautiful. And uh, we've got other, numerous other examples I, I can talk about. I'm gonna just mention you, you Never Give Me Your Money from the Abbey Road album, which is a kind of uh, combination of several songs together. Starts, out, starts off by being a lament about Alan Klein, the business situation but then soon transforms itself into a song about freedom. Out of, college, out of college money spent, see no future, pay no rent. All the money's gone, nowhere to go. Any job I got the sack, Monday morning turning back. Yellow lorry slow, nowhere to go. But oh, that magic feeling, nowhere to go. One sweet dream, pick up the bags, get in the limousine. Soon we'll be away from here. Step on the gas and wipe that tear away. One sweet dream came true today. I think it's, I don't want to use the same word again. <laughs> I'm trying to think of another word. Excellent. <laughs> and then um, we've got Long and Winding Road, another song completely full of empathy, Let It Be, 
which even George Harrison says, you know, Paul sounds so nice when he's singing a, singing a song like Let It Be, although he thought that the real life Paul wasn't quite so understanding and empathetic. Uh, and Lennon didn't, was a bit disparaging towards that track, but um, I think they, they grudgingly had to admit that McCartney was on top of his game during that 69 period just before the split. And uh, I could name a few songs which are maybe not as good from Paul lyrically, such as Mag Magical Mystery Tour and um, Hello Goodbye. But I'm nitpicking a little bit. Helter Skelter is not the best lyric on the planet, but maybe it's not intended to be uh, a great lyric. Um, and then we've got play the Playboy interview from John. Um, Playboy says, what about the lyrics? How did you work together? You'd have to break down the songs, which we'll do. I had an easier time with lyrics, although Paul is a quite a capable lyricist who doesn't think he is, therefore he doesn't try. He would always avoid the problem rather than face it. But in the early days, lyrics really didn't count as long as we had some vague theme. She loves you, he loves her, and they love each other. It was the hook and the line and the sound we were going for. That's still my attitude, but I can't leave lyrics alone. I have to make them make sense apart from the song. And then Playboy says, when you say Paul could, doesn't think he's a good lyricist, Lennon replies, I don't think he's made an effort to, but I don't think he's incapable. I don't think he's as good as me, but he's certainly not incapable. Hey Jude is a damn good set of lyrics and I've made no contribution to that. A couple of lines he's come up with show indications he's a good lyricist, but he just never took it anywhere. He wrote the lyrics to Yesterday, Although the lyrics don't resolve into any sense, they're good lines. They certainly work. You know what I mean? They're good, but if you read the whole song, it doesn't say anything. They're good, but if you read the whole song, it, um, you don't know what happened. She left and he wishes it was yesterday. That much you get, but it doesn't really resolve. So mine didn't used to resolve either. <laughs> um, so Lennon's paying kind of slightly backhanded tribute to Paul as a lyricist on occasion and then there's songs like For No One which Lennon really rates and Fool on the Hill saying he, he can write a good lyric when he's a good boy. Uh, I think in the solo career he was less consistent, we'll, we'll cover that in a separate video and I'll cover John's lyrics both in the Beatles and as a soloist and as I say I'll try and cover George as well. I think this is a pretty good topic for conversation and inspired by this article. Um, so Tristram, I'll give the last word to him. Paul McCartney is not a psychedelic visionary, a prophet or any of the labels that regularly cling to Lennon. Unlike Lennon, he seems to be a man entirely without anger. What he has instead is something at the heart of all great writing, empathy. McCartney's empathy makes him a sublime and truthful storyteller. He sees the inner life running beneath the quotidian detail and shows us both. I can't imagine the self-reflective Lennon writing the opening lines of Eleanor Rigby, thinking his way out of his own shoes and into those of the quiet, unnoticed Eleanor, taking the time to find the real face beneath the face that she keeps in a jar by the door. Or take the novelistic she's leaving home, not just for the uber McCartney-ish mundanity of that opening line, Wednesday morning at five o'clock, but for its shifting perspectives the way that the song gives us the thoughts of the teenage runaway and those of her distraught parents, as I said earlier, I mentioned that point. McCartney's best lyrics meet the demands of sung poetry through a kind of selfless simplicity. They're not showy or will willfully outlandish, as Lennon sometimes are, but seem to grow naturally out of the melody with a sense of the inevitable. All my troubles seem so far away. We know those troubles are here to stay before he says the words. I think this is a pretty thought-provoking article, and I don't know this writer, but he's done a good job, and thank you, Roy Stewart, for sending it to me, and um, getting me to re-evaluate and uh, re-appreciate some of McCartney's uh, best lyrics. Uh, for this episode, it was just his Beatles output, and we'll cover the rest later. So thank you for watching. See you next time.